Hello and welcome <laughs> to the RPG uh, Exploration Society. I am your host, B Zelda, they, them. As always, I come fully prepared with everything that I need to say right when I have to say it. Um, I am a podcaster, streamer, writer, and community manager for Adventures League. Um, uh, I love Avatar The Last Airbender, but not enough if you quiz me on it because I fail most pop quizzes. Cannot be quizzed on the spot. Um, so let's talk about our sponsors. No, let's uh, let's go around. Uh, let's do a little introduction. Connie, how are you today? I'm doing just well. Thanks, V. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Connie. If you don't know who I am, my pronouns are they, he, and she. But I'm not here on Saving Throw Show playing a very uh, stick up the butt, intense by the book, but heart of gold, question mark, super question mark, firebender. I am the GM and executive producer behind Trans Planar RPG, which, if you don't know, is an all transgender, BIMPOC led, 100% homebrew DD show set in the original non colonial anti orientalist world of NT. Dake. If that's interesting to you, give us a follow on all the socials at Transplanar RPG and tune in Saturdays. I don't know why I said it like that, but tune in Saturdays. <laughs> Saturdays. Yeah. <laughs> Saturdays. <laughs> <laughs> 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We also have a podcast. We prefer to consume actual play content that way. That's beautifully edited, trimmed down SFX music, what have you. Transplanar RPG, wherever you pod your casts. I suppose I'll pass along introductions to Drac. Oh, hi. I'm Draconics or Drac for short. Uh, I use he, they pronouns. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Draconix, that's D-R-A-K-O-N-I-Q-E-S. I stream all over the place, so I'm everywhere at any given time. I can't really, I don't entirely know what my schedule is, to be honest. <laughs> Just follow me on Twitter to figure that out with me. Um, but I'm going to be playing Azu. He also uses he, they pronouns. He's a waterbender, the um, overly aggressive um, short king. Um, uh, so it's going to be fun to be that chaos again today. Uh, I'll pass it on over to Michelle. Thank you so much, Drac. Um, hi, I am Michelle uh, Rapp, and you can find me usually on Twitter, spouting nonsense into the wind, into the void, as so as many other people do. You can also, um, I'm also, uh, you can find me on Loading Ready Run on occasion, where I do a lot of uh, dungeon mastering um, and other random shenanigans. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kiln Fiend Potter. Uh, but today I will be playing the ever chill the super glow a go with the flow even glowing with the flow who knows um De Chen, the uh very tall willowy and uh extremely casual airbender uh along with her uh, amazingly um aggressive violent and drooling um flying boar <laughs> named razor wing <laughs> aka our minivan <laughs> yep. um and with that, I will pass it over to the ever wonderful Vanna. Oh, thank you so much, Michelle. Of course, um, anytime. <laughs> my name is Vanna, and my pronouns are she, her, and I stream full time on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Vanna. And uh, uh, I'll be playing Coral, who is currently kidnapped. So who knows what she's about, really? I guess we'll have to wait and see. <laughs> B! Yes. So thank you. Um, oh, I forgot my pronouns are they, she, and so are Dechens. So <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, for this episode, we are aiming to raise $150 or 35 new subs. Hitting that each night allows us to pay this fantastic cast and keep content like this on the air. Even if you can't afford to back us, spread the word, shout it into the universe, and share the stream with friends and family. And if any of your pets are connected to the internet, make sure not only you put on a parental filter, but you share the stream with them. A tip of just $15 will allow you to send us a message, which we will read live on air. Connie. 
Yes, yes, yes. Uh, speaking of ways to support the channel, a big thank you to our season sponsor, Hero Forge, for supporting Saving Throw Show. Type exclamation point Hero Forge in the chat to check out the wonderful customization tool they've created and get your own personalized miniature today. Now with full color options. I don't know if y'all are on Twitter, but if you are, check out the quote retweets of Saving Throw Show's like latest tweet. Like Drac put a screenshot of like the character he made uh, for this stream in the quote retweets i put yali there it looks so good with color like seriously yeah. check it out uh the options are amazing and now speaking of drac drac yeah so we're also in partnership with Die Hard dice you can get 10 percent off any diehard purchase you make and by using saving throw 22 um at checkout you can use command expansion point dhd to get all the links and stuff like that in chat um but yeah th there's a bunch of i know i'm definitely rolling some diehard dice that you can probably buy I think they're still actually available, so you probably should get them. I highly advise it. Yeah, Connie's got some as well. So yeah, you can use um, Saving Throw 22 for 10% off all of that. Michelle. Amazing. So um, thank you for every, uh, thank you to everyone right now who's watching us on YouTube. Hope you're having fun listening to us and our adventures as you fold your laundry or get your cooking done. Um, by the way, when you take a little break in between, you know, folding those sheets or finishing up that appetizer, do us a solid and leave us a like, a comment, or maybe even subscribe, smash that bell, notifications, all, all that whole nine yards. So any of these things will definitely help the show and it will help the channel as a whole. With that, last but not least, Vanna. Thank you, Michelle. Of course, <laughs> darling. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, support the channel through tips and monthly subscriptions via our Ko-Fi. Enter our exclamation point Ko-Fi in the chat to check it out. On Ko-Fi, you can tip as you would regularly, but you can also join the Exploration Society with a monthly amount. You get the same great rewards as Patreon, and you can unlock things like toasts with your tips. Plus, Ko-Fi doesn't take a cut, so nearly 100% of the tip goes straight to the channel. After PayPal, of course, but that's inevitable. Thanks! Previously on Avatar Legends. <laughs> the last time we saw Coral was just at the end of the musical performance the kids put on while fighting the soldiers from the Fire Nation. With nothing but a yip, Coral was whisked away by some of the guards, never to be seen again. The crew, these kids, were not going to let that go so quietly. They took to the air with Razor Wing and then stomped down onto the ground, crashing and charging into the soldiers, which were trying to escape the capital city. And, oh gosh, names. Azu delivered a powerful punch to the front of Uncle Fang's face, knocking him out and fighting and fending off a bunch of the soldiers. The three kids and Uncle Fang took back to the air with Razor Wing. Is it Razor Wing? Yeah, yeah, it's oh. Razor Wing. Okay, yeah, I, that's my you. boy. That you got it right. Last time you said calling him Razor Fang. Um. Yeah, Razor Fang. <laughs> yeah, the, don't doubt yourself, B. No, no, no. Okay, that's when Uncle uh, Fang and Razor Wing become one. Oh, no, form. no, I would never name my beautiful, beautiful boy after that loser. Like, <laughs> God. <laughs> With that being said, y'all did a little bit of uh, intimidation to discover some information. You learned that you haven't been the only kids of your estranged father. And most of these uh, long lost siblings no longer survive, all because they attempted the one forbidden technique that is known only to your family. The secret art of brain boiling. Now, Uncle Fang revealed a little bit more information after some persuasion, and that's where to find their dear, dear friend, Coral. Down on the streets, there are children who run amok, and they are all kind of controlled by this one individual known as Rat Mommy. After you dropped off Uncle Fang on the top of the spire, you have all set out to find out where Rat Mommy is and to save your friend, Coral. Now. Before we get into it, um, it's it really kind of puts into perspective the kind of game that we're playing when you, when you give a good brief summary. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a, a little question for everybody, and I want you to maybe take a couple seconds to think about it. But if all of your characters had heard one rumor about your father, what would it have been? What is kind of the one story of... Uh, 
Oof. Our flute loving anti establishment uh, storytelling oat seed sower. <laughs> Thanks for that image, B. So knows oats. Just so knows oats. Left and right. <laughs> I feel like Yali's business dad would have told Yali that a uh, slutty dad is wanted in every nation slash like temple slash area of the world for something different, Everyone, but equally everywhere? embarrassing. Ah! Well, that's it the rumor, have to be right? True, that's the, right. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, no, no. That's the story. <laughs> these are the rumors. These are in, these are the versions that you've been told to. It might have been based in reality at some point, but now it might have gone yes. above. I think the I thing that, like that you know he's rumored to have done in the fire nation was maybe like uh, a attempt to seduce the fire lord but have that backfire horribly <laughs> so <laughs> that is the that's, best yeah oh my god that is definitely one of those like frequently whispered stories oh that's perfect uh azu do you have I... any rumors can it be a rumor that azu started <laughs> yes Absolutely. Just absolute, like, does he just <laughs> chat absolute shit about his dad? Um, I think. Uh, I think he he tells people that um, his dad. Oh, I don't know if this is real because I think he fully believes this, but he just thinks that his dad is just an absolutely good for nothing. Like, um, he was he. He he took advantage. He thinks that he took advantage of his mom, like she was in the at the very least a comfortable spot spot in her life where she could support herself and someone else, and he took advantage of that. So he thinks okay. uh, he kind of thinks of him as like a a gold digger to an extent, even though he's not like filthy rich, but just like in it for the lifetime money that he himself can't get. Okay, so you're really spreading like some nefarious rumors. Not that I mean, I don't know, seducing the fire lord's a pretty cool rumor. <laughs> yeah. Um but no, your he, whispers he, are definitely unkind. Yeah. He believes him though. He thinks that he's just telling the truth because of that's how he perceives it. But yeah, I think that's oh. what he's been spreading. Oh, sweet child, you really need some closure. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh Dachen, what about you? What kind of rumors have you heard about uh your willowy father um i mean my so unfortunately or fortunately um my conception was a one night stand in between my mother and this very charming bard who just happened to come through town or just like come through the camping site and i think because she lives dechen lives in such a hippy dippy like communal like kumbaya crunchy munchy um community of course they're also very like stereotypically also very just like open and libertine about lots of other things as well so i think that the um the rumor that was started after he left after just that one night uh was just that he he really kept he usually these sorts of you know couplings they're they're brief they're fleeting uh, but he managed to have that whole night be magical like he kept <laughs> up the whole night like that whole thing was just magical <laughs> and just it was and because, and spaces. <laughs> I, 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 love, I love establishing that my nun like my the or my order my nun order is just very like sexually open it's beautiful I love like, they it. fuck but like it's just you don't always expect it so <laughs> yeah yeah it's just like we're so like very conservative with our dress but you know in other ways we're just very open about everything so yeah he he could keep up and i think that was like the thing that was most remarkable Wait, to all the nuns <laughs> So all the nuns was it a <laughs> no it wasn't Georgie, <laughs> but it was just like you know he had stamina. Were they like the outside the door? Was it like, like, <laughs> was it like a Midsummer <laughs> moment? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think they were just like in a yurt, you know, and just like going at it the whole night. Yurt, and everybody was just like no, nothing's no, more romantic no. than a yurt. Y'all don't know. 
<laughs> Has Dechen tried to tell the story to Azu and Yali? Azu, I need to know. I no, think... no, no. I don't think that she's told anyone because I think after the first bit where she was last, because last session, I think she talked about how you know, love making was beautiful and natural yeah. and whatnot. And both of you were making. like, no. I think she was like, <laughs> okay, you know, my, my, my mission as an, as an, uh, um, what is it? An initiate of this order is to try to keep everyone comfortable. So I'm not going to talk about the like 16 hour session. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> that, 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 I don't want to think tantric. about that. That's tantric. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, oh, this was a very long way to say uh, my, our father is a, an, an expert at tantric sex. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> really time and time again. And brain 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 of course, yeah. it's log winded. We're airbenders. But, uh, oh my! <laughs> All right, I have to go and never associate with any of you ever again. <laughs> oh God! All right, all right, Coral. What is the rumor that you were told growing up about this? Um, so I don't have any good adjectives for this person anymore. Yeah, when you say like rumor, does it have to be like a rumor, or could it just be something like my mom told me about him? It can, yeah, no, I'll absolutely accept okay. that. I think that'd be lovely. Um, I think maybe like he was um like really attuned with animals. I think it was just it's like an unexpected quality of his. Like he's very loud and rambunctious and he boils people's brains. But you know, you catch him at the right moment and you know, a like a Disney princess, a bird will perch on his finger and he can, you know, whistle to it, you know, in its own language, you know, and it's just very since okay. they were on the water, I imagine something with uh, some aquatic life. Not like, like an, not any Aquaman shit, but you know. No, no, no. Like a stork, maybe? A stork. Uh, a if stork. there was an otter <laughs> or a Rain. seal, you know, maybe they had a fun time playing in the sand. <laughs> I like that. Not the imagery I, yeah, I would have gone with, but I'm here for it. A turtle it's duck, like, yep. Okay, yeah, turtle. I forgot everyone's 50 50 animals. Yeah. An, an otter seal. <laughs> uh -huh. So it was a, a alligator stork. Um, Aww. Yeah. Combo. That's terrifying. terrifying. <laughs> Which, that what alligator. part is what? Uh, yes. <laughs> it's just a gator, but it rises out of the water on these like. <laughs> it's just very <laughs> long <laughs> leg. It just comes up. It just that, ascends. We, it's like he, played his, he played his flute and soothed it. Yeah. It still has a beak, though. It just has an enormous beak. So when it's in the water and its eyes pop out, you think it's an alligator, but it rises. Oh, God. It like a lot in it. Legs and stork beak mode. of a stork, body of, a, of an alligator. <laughs> That sounds about right. All right, perfect. These are really wonderful rumors. So you've all kind of grown up with this colored perspective of this individual, which has done not a whole lot for you except bring you into this world. Um, so with that on our minds, we are going to open the scene with the three of you still taking to the air with uh, Razor Wing. The day is starting to set a little bit. It is towards the afternoon. Um, the lights down below in the city all kind of create this beautiful halo effect as you are all gliding above it overhead. How are you all feeling? I'm feeling okay. I'm still probably a little bit dizzy because I did headbutt um fang like a couple of times <laughs> um but after some tea from dechen um and also yali's interrupting dechen with the whole love making conversation um <laughs> the love making is just making better. more damage talking about love making <laughs> yeah. actually inflicts damage <laughs> so um i think Ozzy's feeling pretty good he's, he's a little bit confused as to how this rat mummy is going to help us find mm -hmm. coral but he's not one to think much so he's just going with the flow I think Dechen is just really happy, you know, I, I think that she's excited because like when she's, she's lived with like other kids in the commune, but they were never related to her. And so this is a whole new experience and she's just really excited, just quietly, just so happy. Um, she keeps offering both Yali and Azu, you know, cookies and like little pies and just things that you know come from that she she's stored in her bag um as travel rations but yeah i think she's just 
really happy. She's also super concerned about Vanna, but um, she's feeling very optimistic, I think. She doesn't even care about her father at this point. She's just like, <laughs> yay, friends, siblings. Aw, real siblings. Yeah. I love that. Yali, how are you holding on? Yali is staring down at like the glowing halo of light of Capital City of the Fire Nation underneath them. Like their hair, I think that was perfectly coiffed before, like has come undone, uh -huh. right? And like sweat is running down their brow. You know, it's like they've got some bangs mussed up in front of their face, right? They like push their hair out of their like emerald green eyes flecked with gold. And they like sit on top of Razor Wing and they just sort of like take a beat. And then they address both Azu and Dechen. This vermin mother, I might be able to have a contact with her once we touch down. Oh, oh, that's so nice. Um, do you, do you know her? Uh, no, but I think I know of her. My other parent, um, the one that our shared father oh, left. Oh, your business <laughs> parent. Yeah, you were telling us about the Yes. Base. Yeah. I was told by my mom that business people wear like really big shoulder pads. Is this also the case for your parent? That is a disgusting stereotype. Shoulder I'm so pads sorry. are not fashionable. I I'm so sorry. I did not mean Hold to. Hold on, are you I from apologize. the Fire Nation? <laughs> Aren't they like all shoulder pads? <laughs> all shoulders all the time. Yeah, yeah no. Uh, Yali, Yali, <laughs> when, when they say that, they self consciously like unbuckle a pauldron. <laughs> like, <laughs> <in their back. laughs> Like not all it on the side from below. Sometimes it's like, oh, have a nice day. I don't wear this every day. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's part of it's part of why I think the Fire Nation's a little backwards right now. Okay, shoulder pads, imperialism, brain boiling secret acquisition. That's beside the point. Well, um, wherever you know we can like touch down, maybe. I've been traveling a lot with like my mom and my grandma and my like 42 aunts. So like we could, I could see like maybe if we went there before, we could probably check things out. That's a big family. Yeah. Oh, that we're, yeah. Yeah. It's really nice. We all like, we you know we make dumplings together. We harvest the tea. We trade. Huh. We go to the big tree with all the nuts, and we make beads. I hold up my prayer beads. <laughs> um, so, you must not have been very lonely growing up, huh? Oh, I don't know what. I mean, no, no, never really. In fact, I, I kind of. It's actually kind of nice to be with just the two of you. And I, of course, I miss our sibling, but like, I think I haven't been around this few people in a really long time. Yali squeezes out a bitter smile. <laughs> Sorry, it's so hard for you. It's not. Oh, no, no, no. It's not difficult. It's just, you know, it's interesting. Would you like another cupcake? <laughs> uh, it does. Does the cupcake have lint on it from your bag? No, oh, like, it's like in a special, okay. it's like in a special, like, Tupperware thing. <laughs> Uh, Yali <laughs> takes it reluctantly because they actually like Dejan's cupcakes and treats a lot. They actually taste really good, but they will never admit it and they eat it. Uh, so you're talking about uh, contact. We probably, do you know where we can find them? Well, my business parent, let's say, uh, has contacts all over Capital City as soon as we touch down in... Uh, GM, is there like a name <laughs> for this district? Like a cool, like, ooh, like like Skyrim's like Ratway or like <laughs> the, the Orphan Hovel or something. Uh, I'm not Otter Penguin Lane. <laughs> Otter <laughs> Penguin Lane. Hold on. Let's, what's, um, uh, what is another small field Possum? animal? Um, Muskrat? Raccoon. Wombat. <laughs> Raccoon City. Ra um, <laughs> I, it's got to be like 50 50, right? So, like, um, yeah. I, I uh, kind of like muskrat wombat, but that's just so many words. I think just muskbat. Muskbat. Although it's like a bat bat. Although I'm down for that too. Muskbat. I mean, bats are just rats of the sky. Exactly. Probably. 
Sky yeah, puppies. <laughs> <laughs> sky puppies. We shall go to your sky puppy. <laughs> uh, in that case, Yali will say, we've got, I have access to contacts all over the city, including Muskbat District. Uh, I've never met them myself, but I'm sure one of my contacts could make an introduction. Oh, or I... perhaps Vermin Mother will recognize <laughs> uh, the names I drop. Oh, uh, we went through, actually we visited Muskrat, uh, Muskbat, rather, a district, I think a couple of years ago. So I don't know. I think there might be a really, really good, like, noodle place near there. Anyway, I know where we're going now. Nip, nip. And I, like, pat Razor Wing, who, who just drools. <laughs> He's just an ever font of drool. Uh, he was like... <laughs> Just like grunts, and then we d begin to descend um, towards the district. Perfect. Um, I think this part of city, um, I get a little bit of if those uh, of you have seen Arcane, kind of like uh, the Undercity. Oh, vibes. Yeah. 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 Everything's a little dirty. Everything's kind of metalish, rusted, falling apart. Um, everybody who runs around their clothes probably don't get washed very much on the regular because survival is more the priority. But if you look a little bit closer, you can see that people here are thriving and it's just not your typically aesthetically clean way of thriving. And at the very center of this little district is a giant warehouse that uh, Yali, you knew was one of the most popular canning facilities, um, but it went out of business maybe 10 years ago and has been abandoned ever since but you, I, anybody who knows anybody knows that that place is bursting with life um i think we have a, a toast ah yeah um can you so this read it for me yeah yeah papa brain boiler thanks dad um <laughs> <laughs> the toast is remember kids pants are an illusion and so is death Wise word from a brain boiler. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Papa, why would you say that? <laughs> um uh B, I'd love to make a move if that's yes, cool. Please. So I think we're gonna touch down and like um I don't know if there's like a like a square or like next to a big fountain or something. Like uh um, next to a fountain for sure. It was a fountain okay. of a um of a puppy cat. But the cat part's broken and missing, so it's just like uh, like cat dog the show, but just the dog part and only half of the body um, right. that is vomiting out water. Ah, oh, yes, half dog fountain. I remember this place now. Um, I'd love to do um, my move, which is otter, penguins, unagi, and hot springs. Yeah. Um, if you want, I can read it. Uh, yes, please. yes, it says when you visit a new inhabited location you learned about in the past, roll with harmony on a seven through nine. Ask one of these questions on a 10 plus ask two. each of my friends can clear each of my friends and I clear fatigue when I interact with the answers. Um, so the questions are what are the, what's the best local pastime? What interesting locations are nearby? Who is the most famous person here? What special tradition is prized by locals? Uh, what's the most interesting legend locals recount about this place? Um, on a miss, I tell the GM what I expected to find, and I can you can tell me how this place is different. I love it. Has changed. Okay. Okay. Um, and yeah, y'all, this is this isn't necessarily questions. Um, I. Well, I guess I would maybe ask, but maybe if y'all want to ask them too, um, or if you have a thought about which questions we should ask, like totally let me know. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and roll two dice, but I add plus two um, because I have plus two in harmony. So we're just hoping. That is a 10. Yeah. So you get to yes. ask two of these questions. Do any of y'all have any thoughts about which questions I should ask? I think interesting locations is always a good one. Okay. Uh, yeah. And maybe the most famous person here. I mean, okay. Wait. You um. What, probably what, know what? that it's Rat Mommy. Yeah. 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 Uh, I like the interesting legend one. Yeah. yeah. Maybe like we can use that as leverage when talking to her. Ooh. Cool. So yeah. Um. What interesting lo What interesting locations are nearby, and what's the most interesting legend locals recount about this place? Uh. Okay. So the first is 
the legend of the canned good kids and it's basically a it's that canned food facility um that got shut down due to some uh, malpractice everybody's kind of uh, fuzzy on those details but after it broke, after it shut down people kept seeing kids kind of going in and out of it and we're talking like 16 and under so it became rumored that that was just kind of the place where kids got turned into canned food and the canned food business went down like all their sales went down for years and it's taken them a very long time to recover uh so there's that story the cans um, are children <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god, that's people dark. from the area. Wow. Uh I think another what are we doing? Interesting. An interesting location and interesting legend. Interesting yeah. legends, local legends. Um I think the other one then would probably be about Rat Mommy. Um she started her life as I think she was a, ooh, ranks, I know rank names, a colonel um, in the Fire Nation army, but her powers of, oh gosh, now we got to intertwine rats. Why do we choose rats? Rats <laughs> in okay, the Fire Nation. Okay, so when Nation. rats intertwine for too long, that's how a rat king is made. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> so is she, she a she's just a rat? There. Yeah, is she just a rat king of all kings? What? A rat queen? Yeah? Okay, I don't so know what's happening. Out. What I'm now picturing <laughs> is a pile of rats stuck together with like grossness and dirt and then a hat on top of them. Um now hear me out. It's like the Lady rat David mommy just rats. Ooh, Are we going to talk to a bunch of rats? <laughs> They've fused into one rat, one consciousness. <laughs> um, rat yeah, bender. I have... <laughs> <laughs> I have a reason for this. I have a reason. Um, if you can so blood yeah. bend, you can rat bend. That's, that's literally actually what I was thinking, honestly. <laughs> Everybody gets rabies. You get rabies. You get rabies. You get that rabies. rat had a dusty screw. You get tetanus. Oh my god. <laughs> Where he get that screw at? Okay, so the, the legend of the uh, the rat rat mommy is basically just a pile of rats that has now run muskbat um alley muskbat lane muskbat lane. Mm. That sounds good. Uh, and it's something that nobody wants to mess with. Not to mention, most of the adults don't really believe that it's real because. Nobody's going to believe in a sentient pile of rats. Um, so we have some interesting locations. We do have the Canned Good Factory. And just outside of this little section in town is the um, holding cells, like uh, a temporary jail for people that get shipped off to um, the palace. Okay. Oh, so so yeah, we land... We land at a uh, half dog, half dog fountain, <laughs> and uh, I, uh, Dead Chen just sort of like gently slides off, and um, pats Razor Wing, and says, "I think you know. Um, I've heard a couple of weird stories about here, but you know, every place has its own local." color and legends but in addition to amazing noodles apparently some of the cans here can contain children uh, um i okay i suddenly feel very unsafe here um oh no it's not safe here at all we should probably take razor wing with us yeah yeah we left Although safe that, as soon as we got on that stage together i think that's in the past now oh well, that's fair i mean yeah, i guess the question point. is you know um you know i i know a little bit about places to go like the canning factory where the children are put into cans i don't think that children are put into cans though because children can't fit into cans um but then there's also just um I, I actually come to think of it there's also this other legend about you know the rat mama and how she's in fact maybe a rat queen like a bunch of rats just all together 
um maybe they put the children in the cans i don't know Did yali know. like exchanges a look with azu <laughs> i was just looking up at yali this whole time i'm just like wiping drool off of my pig <laughs> just... uh huh well before we track down this rat vermin mother <clears throat> to use her proper title uh maybe we should bring something to her so we're not empty-handed if she is a pile of uh rodents as you presume maybe grain apples biscuits snacks might suffice um well i do have some i do have this whole cake in my bag that my mom well, I, put in okay i what think that in... would work you know i'm not i was gonna ask questions but i think at this point i'm <laughs> I'm just going to accept that you have a bakery in your bag. <laughs> I mean, of course, Brie can tell me at any time. Brie can tell me at any time, like, if I'm going overboard with this hammer, I am hammer like, this. bakery space. Like, well, <laughs> I mean, I do have this cake in my bag, and I just pull out, like, I don't know if you've seen in Avatar Last Airbender, like, when Gyatso and Ong are, like, having a pie fight. Yeah. <laughs> I just pull out, like, a whole cake. And I'm like, well, you know, this is... I think um, straw raspberry custard um, on the inside. Do you think that they might like that? We can that, also go get noodles. That might actually work. Right, yeah. Azu? I don't think rats are very picky, if I'm going to be <laughs> honest. No. And I assume, the sooner we can get to Coral, the better. I don't want to dilly-dally here. And Yali's got to eye like some skittering musk bats oh, yeah. coming out of an alley. <laughs> <laughs> covered in dust oh aren't they so cute hi that's one it's word for them. Is that you? Hi. plague beasts oh so Yali, fine. what do you know your contact that you're talking about do you is there like a symbol is there a smoke signal i put the cake uh, back in my back uh, okay. <laughs> hide the goods just like <laughs> yes there is a way for me to contact someone and B, I would like to use a move of mine as well, yes. uh, which is to to raid my lineage's resources. When I raid my lineage's resources without their consent or knowledge, mark a condition and roll with my progress. Uh, and there are different things that happen on a hit or a miss. So All I right, think uh, to describe how I'm doing this, I like sort of like shimmy my party into this alleyway maybe razor wing can wait outside <laughs> I look around and i like light up my hand with like fire bending it just turns into like a molten slice uh, and i sort of just draw into the brick uh like the sigil of my family just <laughs> And like the smoke sort of comes up from the alleyway and I, you know, at like the lava sort of sloughs off and like hardens into these like cooling clumps of like rock, like on the floor of the alley as I draw this and I like snuff it out and I go, now we wait. Hopefully they got the message as like the smoke wafts up uh, and I'm going to roll for that. <laughs> when, roll when, with progress. When um, Azu sees Yali do this, he goes, I knew something like that too. And he pulls out like the little like water skin by his side and like he holds his finger to the um, top of it and he basically power washes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like Azu was here on the wall. <laughs> Yali is not impressed as your water sprays them <laughs> like sideways <clears throat> and they slick back their hair as you do that. Uh, I got an eight, which I think is a hit like a mixed success uh so on a hit hold one resource on a seven to nine choose one either you obtain an additional resource you nab your goodies quietly and quickly your lineage will be none the wiser or you steal yourself for what you're doing avoid marking a condition i think it's funner if i mark a condition uh so i'm gonna obtain i'm gonna nab my you know what that's not i want things that are interesting so i'll just get an additional one resource so i've got two resource and the condition i'm gonna mark is gonna be insecure i think Ooh. uh as i etch this sigil i look around like worry nodding my brow to see if azu or deshin will recognize it um because i think it's like I a variation on the fire lord's symbol it's I like think, my family crest within the court i think deshin recognizes that sigil and doesn't didn't know that that was yours Aww. um because that sigil was etched into one of the um, last large trees that her order used to travel to and pay homage to. And it was basically burned to the ground. And what, what the stump that was left 
had that sigil on it. And so now I think Dead Chen's scared. Yeah, that tree is now a, a very nice book in Yali's room. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like a table. It's like someone's credenza. Yeah, it's like, a, yeah. It's like <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. Ozzy doesn't, I don't think Ozzy cooks. Uh, Ozzy just kind of looks at it, it's like, that's really cool. Not as good as mine, <laughs> but it was good. I just oh, moved behind Azu, which is funny because Azu is so, so short and Dechet is so tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, I mean, with the resources obtained, thankfully, maybe, hopefully, I'm going to try to spend them uh, to to get introductions and connections is one of the resources I can spend. That's what it's going to be used for. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're going to pause right there. And the scene is going to switch over to a really ugly color. Like the the color palette was gold and red, but the red is so peeling and, and faded that it's kind of like this off brown. Um, even the gold, which was never really gold, is peeling. And it's just like this very, very pale yellow. Um, Coral, you are in a holding cell that is made out of a metal. Again, we're going with that really like yellow and red theme. Um, what is that restaurant? It's very McDo Ronald McDonald. Jackie Cheese. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the above. Um, you we feel a little had... hungry. I don't know what that is, but I trust Me neither. That's a SpongeBob, that's a SpongeBob <laughs> reference, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> I, I thought it was a real place. <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Mm -hmm. Um and you are in this cell um there is one bench the ground is covered with old dirt like people dirt like uh if you Don't step say in people <laughs> dirt <laughs> not people this. dirt as opposed to <laughs> non people dirt like if you don't take your shoes off and like you're in this surrounding area for a long time like all the dirt from your shoes kind of comes off there so it's just like grass bits there's like chunks of like shoe shaped dirt um it's never been swept there's old crunchy leaves um chunks of hair people dirt what the fuck people dirt you know chunks of hair yeah this is this is this is a weird stream this we've got horror series this is a horror series yeah this is a this is a we're, we're playing urban shadows we're not yeah, playing I, I, I this like <laughs> whimsical thing and we're putting bit children in hands Over the road, you just get some going chunks of hair hey, and hey. stuff <laughs> people dirt you see we see a woman in the distance she just dissolves into rats just like, <laughs> there she is just got lovecraftian oh. real quick yeah yeah oh goodness All the i try hard for light and whimsical but it's not in me no 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 you are great <laughs> sorry great. we're we're teasing you <laughs> we, we love this we love you please keep going uh i can't change um so <laughs> coral you've been in this room for about i don't know three i don't know from three to five hours time is a little uh a little wibbly wobbly mm -hmm. at this moment um and the only thing you remember after being captured were the sounds outside of the bar cells um the bars outside of your cell there needed to be a comma in there um were the sounds of soldiers kind of muttering about how they can't wait for this um prisoner convoy to get a move on because it's dinner time they're hungry and this is the last prisoner run for quite some time because um we're gonna have that special event and finally purge all of these darn prisoners the purge is happening <laughs> You know what you signed up for. B is oh like, hold on, I'll lighten the mood. Um <laughs> the purge. That's better, right? Oh my god. Can't make people dirt if there are no people. <laughs> you know what you have to do. <laughs> I kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so Coral, you don't really hear much now other than the light snoring of the elderly guest that is laying on the only bench in this small oh, I'm holding a roommate? cell. <laughs> yeah, you're not alone in here. You got like an old um All right. they're wearing rags. Um they have legs. Rags, rags. <laughs> rags. Oh, rags. Oh, I'm not wearing legs. legs. <laughs> I'm like yeah. you're wearing legs. What? Um no 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 no, please. I can't we can't let the game go in that direction. Do they seem like they're okay? Or the time I've been in here, did they seem okay? Hard of breathing, you know, coughing up a lung a little bit, but that might just be a them problem. And other than that, they're fine. 
Okay, but they're asleep right now. Yeah, snoring like a truck. Like a okay. truck engine idling. I was thinking it. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. You know what's cool is Coral's specialty is um is fine metal building. So or metal bending. Hey. It's almost like you knew that. <laughs> um so I'm trying to think of a couple ways it'd be cool to break out of the bars. Do you think the bars are too thick for her to bend? I don't think it's impossible. Um, Because my other idea is she has, if they didn't take it, she has her, like, masthead metal necklace. And she could bend that into, like, a fine metal saw and get through the bars that way. You might have a better time with that. It'll just take longer, whereas the metal bending on the bars themselves would just take, like, a 10 plus and nothing, like, nothing below that would be acceptable. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I think we'll go with the the kind of like sawing route, just because I also think it would be quieter to not wake up mm -hmm. the the guard. Or the other thing is, I mean, how does bending work? Can I just bend the keys over here? Wait. Okay, I have a fourth idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Four. Okay. Sure. Can I bend the piece of my mass head into a skeleton key in the lock on the yes. exterior of the door? That's what I yes. want to do. That's okay, that is do. just going to be a rely on your skills and training, which is going to be a 2d6 roll plus your focus. Oh. <laughs> that's something, that's a skill you're good at, right? No. Oh. <laughs> well, I got a... <laughs> well, I got a three. <laughs> T total? You can push your luck, right? That's a thing. Like, uh, not, not, I mean, yeah. But it wouldn't matter, right? Um, I would only get a mixed result. Oh, when you push your luck uh, in a risky situation, say what you want to do and roll. Passion on a hit, you do it, but it costs you to scrape by. Push your luck is kind of like if nothing else applies. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's a that's that's so I've just... failed horribly. <laughs> She's not a criminal, okay? She's trying. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so what does that failure look like first? And then we'll go through with what happens. <laughs> I think she's just like, this is a great idea. <laughs> and then, you know, takes the mass head and bends it fine. And you can see like with the the amount of detail that she can have in her bending. But as soon as it gets in the lock, it's as 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 good as her shoving like a hot dog in there. <laughs> it's just like mushy metal oh, that oh, she's just no. like jamming oh, into, no. into the lock. Um, the She's sound... like, wait, I thought this would be easy. <laughs> Coral, no! Okay, uh, so first I'm going to have you mark a condition. Um, but foolish? why? I've suffered enough. <laughs> foolish just, yeah. just a wee bit um and the clattering wow, sound no one could see this <laughs> <laughs> you hear the snorts behind you like, oh, oh, whoa, what was what oh, do i know oh, this guy's name little person what? <laughs> little yeah. person i'm five nine <laughs> uh you look like you're about five years old what, what? Well, I mean, I've seen. No, I don't think I've actually ever seen any small children who are five nine. Is that? Are you fifty nine? Am I? I'm not wearing my glass. I'm not wearing my glasses. I'm not fifty nine years old, sir. No. <laughs> so we are letting kids into jail now. Is that what's happening? Um, listen, I'm not here to, you know, discuss the the morality of child imprisonment. <laughs> I'm just trying to get us out of here. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, you probably should have woke me up if you were planning some kind of kind of cool escape. What what are you doing over there? It looks like you're trying to smush a hot dog into a can that's too <laughs> small. <laughs> you didn't see. It's uh 
That's a pretty bad set there. Hey, yeah, maybe little, you could keep your person. maybe you could keep your voice down. Oh, oh, okay. But uh, am I taking orders from you, or what's going on here? No, I'm, it's just it's just like a friendly suggestion. Okay. You know, if we're trying to get out, maybe we keep the volume down because the guard is currently asleep. Yeah. 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 Um, so I'm in here to be executed. What are you in here for? <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I-, I overheard a little something that maybe kind of implied that we were all going to be executed. So same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good, good, good. I-, I always feel better when, you know, you don't have to die alone. Well, I, here's, I have this idea, though, where we don't die. What do you think about Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Maybe I could go back home to my my family. My family's just my goldfish, but <laughs> it would still... It'd really be nice. He's such an Avatar old guy. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> it's great. Oh Masterclass. This is amazing. Masterclass in Avatar elderly. Um... <laughs> What what's what is what's your name? Oh hi. Um I hi. uh 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 Drac what is the name Drac- of the last No 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 what what's the name of the last food item that you ate? Oh um now you've asked me this, I realize I haven't eaten today. Um <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. But, uh the last food item I ate. Uh a bagel. I a bagel. Oh, okay. Uh, my name's Bagel. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, it's bagel. Nice, nice That's to meet a great you. name. So, um, are you are you a fifty nine year old individual? <laughs> are you a child that is very tall, or are my glasses? Do they really need to be updated? I'm I'm a young adult, um, oh. and I'm five feet tall and nine inches. Oh, but okay. Again, I'm not sure that's super important right now. Um, I tried to pick the lock with my metal bending, and that did not work. So if you have any ideas now that you're up and about, I'm open to hearing those. Oh, well, I've never tried to stage an escape. Uh, my skills are, well, I could take my teeth out. Um, <laughs> and he does, like, the denture, kind of, like, clack, clack. Mm-hmm. And puts them back in. What wow. do you think? That'll dis- destruct a guard? I mean, I I think if you, we threw teeth at him, he would be very distracted. Yes. Okay. Okay. I think I think we're onto something. And um, with all the time that um, Bagel has taken up with chatting with you, the guard behind you has uh, woken up, and another guard kind of ends, and another soldier enters, and they start whispering, and you can kind of hear the whispers of um, prisoner transport convoy, and we have to go now. <laughs> Mm. One of the guard picks up the keys, which I assume fell to the ground, gives you a bit of a look and unlocks it. And we are going to commercial break and change the scene over to our other crew. Oh my god, terrifying. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'm trying to <laughs> metal bend the dentures into a key. Ew. <laughs> I basically tried that already. <laughs> Um, so your resources are being utilized as a connection. So there's a person that will recognize you is my understanding. What I'm trying to do is send up a smoke signal signal that one of my business father's more unscrupulous contacts might recognize here so they can help us make an introduction to rat mommy. Who is, I think we assume rat mommy knows where coral is or has coral, right? Yes. Like that's yeah, yeah. our party's assumption. Might, might have some, might have some intel, like. Even know how to get in. Yeah. Okay. Frank told us. Um, I think about twenty minutes passes uneventfully. Um, do you all just kind of hang out near the near the symbols, uh, in this back alley? I I think so. I think at this point, Dechen is keeping her distance from Yali, and Aww. it has taken to like kind of hiding behind Razor Wing. There is no like subtlety to this. It's just like. Very gradually, just like. <laughs> yeah, Yali will notice uh, for sure. And like, maybe after like five minutes of, of that, we'll just sort of like turn to address you, Dechen. <sighs> Spit it out. I... I've got nothing in my mouth. 
It's a figure of speech. What is bothering you? Why are you acting weirder than you usually are? I just sort of poke my head out from behind Razorwing, who has at this point become very protective. Um, I'm just say, um, so is that your family crest or? Um... Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's my uh, business parents crest, the parent that I ran away from. Um, so <sighs> you know how there was a really um, well, we travel, my family and I, we travel, we travel a lot, and, um, we like to visit some of the great groves, uh, kind of north of here, um, pay our respects to the great trees, and, uh, we saw that one of the trees wasn't there anymore because someone had burnt it to the ground and had put a sigil, um, just like that on it, and that was kind of terrible, and, um, it made us very sad. Um, okay. And then I hide. <laughs> <sighs> Yali actually, like, like lowers their head a little bit and a shadow falls over their face as they're leaned up against the sigil, right? Like, one foot on the alley wall. <laughs> they, like, look up through, like, a little bit of hair that's fallen in their eyes, like, sideways yeah. at Azu. Uh, and they look look back at Deshin. <sighs> you okay. don't see Deshin. You just see a slobbering pig. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Fine. Look. Okay, look. And Yali, like, uncrosses their arms and, like, pushes off of the alley wall. My, my business father, Kazu, uh, he's one of the Fire Lord's husbands. Okay? Um, he's in charge of their land reclamation and water purification efforts, or whatever that means. I think that's just a euphemism for burning stuff to the ground. It doesn't... I kind of poke my head out and I kind of like step out and I say, so it doesn't sound like you're super excited about that. <laughs> I mean, for as long as I can remember, my father has shown me what he calls the fruits of the Fire Nation's labors, right? Storybook pictures of progress, shining city on a hill. But then he took me out one day to one of these projects, and I saw the forest that was burnt to the ground to make room for more Fire Nation settlements, and I don't know. It's just... I, I take out my prayer beads, um, which are made out of nuts, and I I hold them and I um, look down, and I say, you know, there's only one tree left in the world that produces these nuts that we make for our holy items. There used to be ten others. And the greatest of all was in that grove. But, and I put them in my pocket and I say, but that was in the past. The only thing we can do now is look forward. <sighs> I can't say that I don't think it's appropriate because you don't, you didn't do anything. Um, sounds like your dad did it, but I can understand why. Yeah, I mean, he's not going to pay for it, though, Dechen. Don't you want revenge? Don't you want to, I don't know, punch me in the face? I can show you how. <laughs> never, put your, never put your thumb inside your fist. That's a perfect way to dislocate it. Always hold it like that. Um, I, was gonna, I was just gonna literally like stand up and like actually start showing her the movements for it. Um, Dechen's very confused. <laughs> um, but uh, eventually she says, It's okay, Azu. I think one of the things you learn about when you begin airbending is how to let go of things that 
are around you because as much as I love my family and as much as I love both of you and I love Razor Wing and she's just like uh, just a cinnamon roll so she just loves everyone um but like she just says you know that these things are only temporary and that we have to treasure them while they last so it was a beautiful memory and it will always be a beautiful memory and now we're gonna make more memories together <laughs> but that's that's not how life works that's not how the fire nation works if you just roll over and take it and the Fire Nation is just going to keep taking. Fire consumes and spreads. It's not like wind. It doesn't just disperse on its own. If you don't stop it, it's going to take over everything. But do you know what blows out a candle flame? Wind. Oh and with God, that, I just sort of, I just sort of get back on Razor Wing, and I pull out some like granola bar. I pull out like a muesli mix. I just start eating. It. <laughs> I just so this was a really good way um, of role playing the mechanized version of balance in this game. Um, now, the way I'm kind of interpreting how this happened, it sounds like Dechen, you were calling out um, Yali about their principles. Now, remember, Yali's principles are the really intense ones. Um, <laughs> Tradition and progress. Yeah. And this conversation was kind of very much a fight against the progress that the Fire Nation has made because it's been nothing but destruction and Yali kind of coming to terms with maybe that's not the right route uh so if i understand based off of this you know vast amount of rating that i'm known to do um when you call someone out uh it's the move for getting somebody oh why don't i just read that that's easier when you openly call on someone to live up to their principle um name and roll with their principle um so progress seed roll whatever you have there on a hit they are called to act as you say and they must either do it or mark a condition um and act as you say is kind of just like just trying like what were your wants it was just kind of like accept I, that go ahead yeah i think it was just sort of acceptance and understanding the truth i think she just wanted to understand what happened and i think she was also just wanting reassurance that hopefully her new sibling wasn't part of this in some way because she was really afraid that that was the case uh, i love that uh, on a seven and nine um yali can change um change his mind in turn um the only thing is they'll have to mark a fatigue uh and they shift your balance as they choose so why don't we just roll yali go ahead and give us a 2d6 plus progress. Am I rolling or is Dechen rolling with my principle? I think your interpretation is what makes sense. That answers my brain question. All right, Dechen, roll with Yali's principle. Okay. Um, you're calling her out on that principle. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what do I add? Do I add any modifier to that or uh um, my progress is a plus one uh but okay. the version of the quick start guide i have here says that part of the trigger is for the person rolling to also shift their balance away from center so when you openly call on someone to live up to their principle shift your own balance away from center then name and roll with their principle but we might okay. we might be looking at different documents here all right Maybe to be to be clear that was not my here. intention i was just rping but yeah i love this let's go for it <laughs> um Okay, I guess I can shift my balance and um, I roll with for progress. For progress! Yes, so that's a plus and one. What are you shifting your balance to? I'm shifting it to plus one minus one, I think. In which so, direction? Um, towards... Oh, wait, no, that actually make, doesn't make sense uh, for my character. I so... think I'm going to switch it towards freedom. So plus mm -hmm. one towards freedom and minus one towards my roll. Perfect. Uh, so what I'm reading is on a miss, they can demand, so Connie can demand, you mm -hmm. act to live up to one of your principles instead. Gotcha. <laughs> cool. Mark so a condition and reverse. act as they request. So basically, if you fail, Connie gets to tell you which principle, like, they get to call out which principle they want you to live up to, and they get to call you out on that, and then you have to shift. Gotcha. Well, I got a 10. So, okay. oh. so you succeed. <laughs> So on a hit, uh, Yali is called to act as Dechen says. They must either do it or mark a condition. So what does Dechen want from Yali in this moment? To be honest? 
Yeah, just be honest. Aw. Okay. Uh, in that case, as you're munching in your granola bar, I offer yeah, you, like I offer everyone granola. <laughs> Yeah, uh, as you hold out a granola, like, Yali doesn't t quite take it yet, but they let out a deep sigh, and for the first time, like, they're, like, you know, rigid, like, straight back, you know, like, they're, like, very, like, intense features. All of that just sort of, like, melts away, right? And they just get a little bit smaller and a little bit softer around the edges, and they just say, Dutchin, honestly, I'm just scared. Okay, I left the only thing I ever knew to pursue some sort of destiny I don't even know if I want with people that I literally met yesterday. And there's a pig, pig bear thing slobbering everywhere. And I don't, I don't know who I am if I'm not a Fire Nation brat. I don't know what my purpose is if I'm not part of the Fire Nation burning down forests because I've never been allowed to think of a purpose outside of that. So I'm just scared. I think, um, I don't know, uh, Azu, do you want to do anything or? Oh, Azu is just kind of sitting back and watching because he's still first of all absorbing that Yali's <laughs> in any way in shape or form related <laughs> to the Fire Lord. Like he's just oh, that's... onto that. It was a big, um, Big mic yeah, drop, so he's yeah. just kind of like watching all of this happen. He's just sitting in the back, probably like resting, like sound the ground with his back, leaning that up against Razor Wing, watching this interaction. Yeah, Razor Wing is sitting on the ground, and I think um, Dechen slides off and um, just uh, walks towards Yali and says, One of the best parts about who you are right now. Is, get, is that you get to decide. You have the freedom to decide who you want to be. Because that's one of the most precious things that life can offer. And uh, at this point, um, I think Dead Chen's like, would you like a hug? <laughs> Uh, uh no okay <laughs> it just sort of backs away it's like but you know if you need anything thank you for being honest i see you and i appreciate you um usually we do a little sway dance after something like this <laughs> oh but you don't have to join in it's totally cool i'm just gonna do it by myself i'm just celebrating you uh, you know, I wish I didn't open up, uh, <clears throat> but like Yali's gonna like clear their throat, like put on their like, you know, mask a little bit again, and but like, there's like a little bit of like a crack of a smile on their face, right? <laughs> Next to Azu, you hear kind of like some shuffling footsteps, and the first thing to come into your view are these massive shoulder pads. Um, <laughs> the Take that, right. Yali! <laughs> <laughs> they bought tassels okay I oh think my god on instinct you just see like so this whole time Ozzy was kind of like um, he kind of like has a uh, subconscious like when he just absolutely might just think about other things he kind of like plays with like um, just a small amount of water kind of like plays a bit between his fingers water bending and the moment he like hears something he immediately makes it into like an eye stagger and like holds it up to this person just very much on edge with now realizing that they've been running around with someone who is closely connected to the fire lord um which explains might explain why there are so many fire nation soldiers after us um so yeah he's on edge and he kind of holds up uh, just an ice pick like a just a long ice pick at this person who's just approached <laughs> wow wow and he's wow, very wow, long because wow. he's short he's, yeah, he's like four answer. foot nine so he has to make a really long one to reach <laughs> uh, so the individual who's who you have an ice pick pointed at is surprisingly even shorter than you um, and the shoulder <laughs> pads almost make them seem wider than they are it's as, they're as wide as they are tall 
Um, so it's an impressive kind of situation. And it's just kind of like a little cape that they're wearing that is dragging on the ground. Um, well, they themselves are wearing pretty unassuming clothing. And this child throws their hands up. Hey, 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 hey. I'm just responding to a call that I got. What, what's, what's, what's going on? Dancing in the background. Shoulder. Shoulder pads. <laughs> um, Yali, I think this is your person. The shoulder pads. Yeah. yeah oh, that's great. And Yali also himself. had like their like hot hands activated, right? And like it goes back down. <sighs> Have I met this person before? Do I know I this person or not? Yet? Met, like their sibling, uh, somebody who was genuinely involved. And this is just like the, the second child first removed kind of. So you see uh, some you're a resemblance. Your Pagu's cousin, right? Yeah, the name's Ragu. Ragu. Uh, oh, you know my cousin. I, I thought that's what I was answering. I wasn't too sure. And they do like a little shoulder shuffle and their tassels jangle. Uh, so yeah. what's what's the sitch? What you got going on? I need an introduction with uh, Rat Mother. You're looking into rat mommy. You got some 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 business you need some assistance with? Wink wink. Just an introduction. That's all. We figure she's a very uh busy person. Well, yeah, it's rat mommy. She's got a whole army of kids to run. What do you think I do for a living? I can't pay my bills. <laughs> I'm only eight years old. Right. <laughs> Right, you're eight years old. Uh, well, Ragu, can you bring us to Rat Mommy? Preferably now. There's someone we're trying to find, and we need her help. I mean, will you put a good word in for you? For you know, you tell your people that I do good with my people, and then I do good with you people, and then I'll get some good commentary with the people. Don't worry, I'll make sure that the ninth husband to the Fire Lord hears of your assistance. Yeah, that's terrifying. But, you know, kids gotta make a living. They got bills to pay. Right. Maybe you can put in an application to be, I don't know, like a court jester or a janitor or something uh, I, in the palace. What? No, I, I just like to run around. I just got me some new shoulder pauldrons. I can't show off shoulder pauldrons as a janitor. Okay, well, if you like hanging out here in Muskbat Lane, uh, I'll make sure the ninth husband makes sure everyone sees you running around with your shoulder pads here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if you don't mind the smell of the place, it ain't so bad. You just kind of, you plug your nose. Yeah, it's, it's, you just, you don't smell uh, the musk, you just try to smell the bat, you know? Charming, Regu, but time is of the essence here, so yeah. a speedy introduction is much oh. appreciated. Oh yeah, let's uh it's just it's just the three of you and 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 what is that? Is that a is that a polar bear that was been mixed with like an otter? That's razor wing. Don't get too close to its mouth. Oh, oh what's gonna happen? Razor wing turns around and like snuffles and then sneezes and it's just blah, right on the kid. My new shoulder baldrons! <laughs> oh, <laughs> The tassels won't sorry, dangle. Sorry about that. Oh, gosh. Technically, it's redundant oh. if you say shoulder pauldrons. By nature I, of them being pauldrons, they're on your shoulders. But it's not like I've read up on the internet. Dejan has pauldrons. no idea this is happening, and she's still dancing, by the way. So <laughs> unless someone introduces her, she's just going to keep doing this. <laughs> okay, well, if you want to gather everyone, we can get going. And uh, Rath Mommy, she always likes a visit. Did you, got, you got some, you got like... Like some, some cashews, maybe some like yeah. pistachios. Uh, We've got. Eat. You got spaghetti? Uh, Dechen? Huh? Oh, we You've have still a got that treat, right? Oh, yeah. I pull out the giant cake. <laughs> oh, you got the whole cake? Hi, yeah. No, my mother made it. Hi, what's your name? I'm Dechen. You've got a mother? Yeah. What? <laughs> what are you doing here? I'm visiting. They have really good noodles down the street. Oh, it's true. They got great noodles. Ra yeah. Ragu, focus, focus. Oh. And I pull out one of the pauldrons I took off and I dangle it in front of them like a treat <laughs> in front of a oh. dog. Focus, focus. <laughs> nice shoulder pauldrons. I'll, I'll give you this if you take just fr take us to Rat Mommy now. Rat Mommy, right. Let's go. Uh, and Thank they start you. leading the way. Okay. Like, <laughs> Oh, God. 
Spirits below. All right, we are going to pause and go back towards the little prisoner encampment where they are holding Bagel and Coral hostage prison. Um, Hostage prison. Yep, you know, they mean the same but very different things. (laughs) Um, You have both heard kind of the whispers of uh, movement. Um, They want to get the the act on the road yep i'm familiar with all regular human sayings and they open up the the show on the road that's the one (laughs) i was like wait are you hinting at some plot point or you just don't know the idiom i just don't remember idioms very well (laughs) i was like wait are we being held hostage to become a part of some circus or something (laughs) oh no I love this. Oh, gosh. No, it's the Purge. You can't forget that. It was a very important detail. Right. The Purge Circus. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, so the guard kind of, like, pushes you around. All right. Two of you. Come on in. I'm moving you to a tank. Don't try any funny business or I'll let your face on fire. Um, can I... <laughs> Can I like retcon and say after he opens the door that uh-huh. I try and throw up a wall? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> oh, it's a metal. That. It's a metal cell, though. I mean, yes. And the floor is metal. Uh, the floor is probably like a really nice lino- linoleum. Oh heck, Linole- linoleum stone, isn't it? No, it's a vinyl. Oh, what they had? Vi- they have vinyl. <laughs> Yeah, I was about to say, like, dang. <laughs> I didn't like, actually know what that no, stuff was made of. what's under the linoleum? Uh, sawdust. Okay, what's under the <laughs> <sawdust>? <laughs> They're only, like, this thick right now. <laughs> then there is some earth. Okay, well, I'm going to try and throw up a wall. Okay. I don't know that linoleum and, um, and sawdust are much of a... <laughs> a barrier between um between her so she's gonna try and throw up a wall to stop them from entering the cell okay um so again that's gonna be 2d6 plus your focus why my focus why uh so you're relying on your skills and trainings i i know like, why i just oh okay I'm upset. But yeah okay yeah i can't help you with that i'm angry <laughs> you Ooh, could have assessed nine, the situation negative oh. one eight okay and so, I do it imperfectly. Do you? Because all that linoleum's here. in the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely the linoleum. Yep, that is Wait, in the way. But mm-hmm. also, the sawdust probably goes everywhere, creating it's some terrible sort of cloud cover. Yeah, it gets in your nose. It gets in your oh. eyes. It's in your mouth a little bit. Everybody's <laughs> coughing. <Right>. Um, it's <laughs> what are you? Oh, you hacking benders! All I wanted to do was poke you with this spear. And then uh, the guard starts to poke you and herds you into a tunnel. Um, Wait, so, like, so the wall didn't work at all? So you created a wall um, between... So I'm trying to imagine. Were you trying to separate yourself inside of the cell still? I was trying to trap us inside of the cell with the guard on the other side. Okay. Um, I think you, yeah, it was very imperfect. Um, you made a wall, but it was cuttable with that spear. And everybody's coughing. But behind you, you do get a really, really hearty applause by a bagel. Great. That's that's that what was... it's really about. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You did good, little kid. Or whatever your specified age was. I don't know. You can just know. call me Coral. Yeah. Coral. Coral, nice it's my to name. A bagel. If you if you, you do told that me your again, name. could you try to use actual earth though? Yes, yeah. thank you for the thank you for the advice. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. I'm just here. I'm a I'm a are you, an, are you a bender? Oh no no. Oh, okay yeah. I, I I sell cabbages on my free time. No oh, no. <laughs> so you know it's, it's a profitable business but it gets you in a lot of trouble <laughs> yeah I, I can imagine so do, do you want to know my backstory I think we're being uh, stabbed <laughs> <laughs> um, 
so yeah, as Bagel is uh, expositing, the guard is able to kind of cut, cut like a little triangle or a little square through. Like, what? What are you two doing in there? Come on! I gotta poke my, I gotta poke you through this little tunnel, and then you're somebody else's problem. You're gonna go to the official prison, and well, it's a secret what's gonna happen. I'm like, <laughs> then he looks to the other guard, and they nod with each other. <laughs> what a bunch of losers! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um, <laughs> can I try and trick them into telling me where we're going? Yes. What does that um, look like? I'm going to say, well, we could help you we, if we knew where we were going, like we could help you get there a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's your pick? <laughs> They're obviously fools. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's easier to, right? It's easier to walk somewhere if you know where you're going than it is to, you know, follow a, a jet pass, which is basically these guys are a jet pass. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so go ahead and roll 2d6 plus creativity. I can't believe that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are haters. <laughs> <laughs> Not everything has to be complicated. <laughs> Fuck. Um, I think my best is only a plus one. What? Oh, what do I add? It's a creativity. Seven. Oh my god, it's something. Okay. Um. So on oh, one. the nine, you can pick one. So either the guard that you're trying to convince. Um, <laughs> stumbles and you can take plus one acting against them going forward um, they act foolishly and I can tell you what additional opportunity you get from like the tomfoolery um, or they overcommit and they are deceived for some time um, I guess foolishly is the most appropriate one yeah um <laughs> really trying to kind of figure out what happens here so you're being kind of like herded in the front of you and you're trying to convince this guard that like if you just let us know where we're going we could help you um and this guard is you know they have rough days they're not hired to use their brains they're hired to use their brawn um what i, I guess yeah i mean uh, we're, you we're know take what you mean, like your legs just work better when you know where you're going <laughs> Uh, that makes so much sense <laughs> I tell that to my boss all the time but they're always like no secret hideaways no secret underground uh bunkers you know you gotta it's always a mystery but no we're just we're taking you to the to the fire palace um there's like an underground prison in there where we only keep our top secret prisoners and we're just gonna kick you in there and then you know that's that's where they do all the, the scary stuff. <laughs> what kind of scary stuff? I, I don't know. They put I, you I in cans. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm going to be tuna. <laughs> Only if you're a kid. I can't tell if you're a kid though. You're so like tall. Your <laughs> I'm a young adult. <laughs> so yeah, it just, it's just not really, your, your legs aren't really moving any quicker. They are though. Oh. But still are yours, so you can't notice. They look down convinced. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, well, it, 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 I mean, there must be some kind of mistake, because it's like, look at me, a, uh -huh. a young adult, and an ancient cabbage man. The, there, There's no way that we're special prisoners. And if you bring the wrong people... To the fire palace with the fire lord and his eight concubines. <laughs> you hear Yao leeches in the distance go, nine? Nine concubines? <laughs> like, that's, there's going to be hell to pay, don't you think? Um, most likely, but my job is just to kind of herd. I'm like, a, I'm like one of those dogs that run around in the grass with the sheep, you know? You know what those dogs also do? What what's that? They have fun. 
Um, Do you ever have fun? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> As you ask the most important question of this. <laughs> Uh, the most important question this person has ever encountered. I mean, think about it. Ever. We're, we're yeah. all freelancers. We need to answer that question as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, he kind of, he keeps prodding you until you have walked up this metal ramp. And he's still standing behind as he's thinking, have I ever had fun? And the door to the ramp starts to like, and it starts to close until you are now inside a metal moving tank. Oh my God, did I get on a train? <laughs> What's it sound like? <laughs> Am I on a fucking train? <laughs> oh no. It sounds very hollow Y'all are inside. never gonna find me. <laughs> Can He's I roll? just a drum. Can I roll trick again to see if my my fun is <laughs> <can be> <laughs> uh, like think yeah. about it? When was the last time you played catch or like flew a kite? Give me a push your luck. And this is gonna be a okay. roll with passion. Okay. <clears throat> I hate my life. I hate my <laughs> whole life. <laughs> Okay. No. I will. I, I got a five. <laughs> oh. oh no! Oh, no. I, why am I rolling so badly? It's disrespectful. Um, you start asking these very pertinent questions. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then your view is filled with just like those the masked Fire Nation soldiers, and then there is a wall of flame, and your vision is cut off. Um, can I have you mark a condition? Uh, 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 um. You're piling one of these conditions. Good job. Yay. Afraid, please. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Y'all are never fucking <laughs> Damn, It's okay. Rat mommy card. will tell us. <laughs> Your mommy has Rat, eyes and ears how everywhere. Is, how is she gonna know I just got put on She's, a train? <laughs> she's tapped into the shared neural wet work of rats. This uh, entire what? city. Did you say neural wet work? <laughs> and it was gross. <laughs> you, I mean, the rats. I. Work? Because it's like their brains. Yeah, I get it. Like wet, like network, but it's wet because it's brains. <laughs> and also there's rats. Uh, the rats running around <laughs> in sewers tend to be kind of wet. <laughs> Thanks, track. <laughs> I got you, don't oh, worry. Gosh. Okay, so back um, down at, oh god, what did we call it? That amazingly named... Musk bat lane. The three of you are led by this small child with the largest pauldrons, um, tassels dangling in the wind, a uh, couple that have been weighed down by the saliva of uh, razor wing. But nonetheless, the four of you kind of pad through the cobblestone streets into the back of the factory. Now, this is the factory that was originally the canning facility um, for the capital of the Fire Nation for quite some time before it was decommissioned due to malpractice. Once you step inside, I there's a lot of preconceptions people have when they assume a repurposed factory by rats. <laughs> it, it doesn't by rats. evoke... <laughs> it doesn't evoke the most uh, glamorous of images. So when the three of you step into this facility, you are all kind of taken aback by what you see. This place has been repurposed and rewrought. All the pieces of iron have been turned into pieces of art. There is not a piece of machinery left. There are living quarters for a bunch of children. There's a kitchen space. There's a living space. And the entire place is has been polished and just filled with rat iconography. Um, a lot of like rat metal or yeah rat mugs thank you for that inclusion um just a lot more than you'd expect but it's strangely beautiful and it makes you feel uh a little claustrophobic but for the most part pretty welcome 
and the tiny child, uh, Ragu, throws their arms up. Uh, welcome! I think I've left Razorwing outside because I don't think that they can fit in here. Oh, we got um, like a double. We got a we got a double door if they want to come in. You you want? Oh, okay. We can have them come in. Yeah, sure. some of the kids can play with. Is it are they kid friendly? Oh, they love kids. Okay, we got nothing but kids in here. Kids and rats. Okay. And um, I whistle, and then uh, Razor would just kind of like Kool Aid mans through the door. <laughs> and just <laughs> good, good stands good. ready for pets. <laughs> uh, and just like the children, like under six, just like toddle out and just like go wild for this new fuzzy or like hairy, fuzzy, hairy creature. Yeah. Um. Ragu kind of dismisses them. I, uh, they, they're gonna go do the things. I gotta go make the introductions now. Um, <clears throat> I gotta say, if everybody could kind of uh, control your faces when you meet Rat Mommy, Rat Mommy's uh, well, she takes care uh, of us, and you know we're kids, we can't pay bills, so she, she does all that for us. But also, Rat Mommy, she don't say a lot, but she says a lot at the same time. It's kind of like how I assume most mommies are, but I ain't never had one. Uh, so, uh, are you ready? Yeah. Ready as we'll ever be. I'm so excited to meet her. Good, good. I Should I take out the cake? Coral. Uh, no, Rat Mommy likes to be surprised. If you could pull the cake out in the middle of conversation and be like, hey, we got you a gift, and then you might hear squeals of surprise. Okay. Thank you, Ragu. Uh, any and Yali leans in and whispers, "Any known weaknesses of Rat Mommy we should be aware of?" Uh, don't vulnerabilities. Don't. Is she scared of fire, perhaps, or maybe ice? Uh, heights, darkness, anything. Mostly cleaning supplies. Okay, thank you. Have I had to <clears> guess? <throat> yeah, also, Rat Mommy, she doesn't like when you comment on the fact that she is a pile of rats. Uh, Got it. She's actually a pile of, so she's actually a pile that, of rats. That'd be I great. thought that was just a rumor or a euphemism. Uh, okay, and got that, Dutchin? says that. Oh. <laughs> they push the door open. And this room is set up like a throne room. At the very end is an ornate chair that has been wrought out of iron and steel, um, creating like a rat body with like the little mouse face like up with its little mouth open. Um, and it's got like teeth out of metal um, and its little arms for like arm holders and its body. And it's got little feet sticking out that are just like you could put like little bangles on it. But on the on that throne is in fact a massive formation of rats with a really pretty black hat on it that has a feather sticking out. Oh my god. Immediately, I was just like, oh my god, you really are just a bunch of rats. <laughs> <laughs> and you hear some squeaks in the distance. Uh, what? What did I say? You're not supposed to comment on the fact that she's a bunch of... She doesn't like to hear it. She knows what she is. I thought it was like an idiom or euphemism or something. I didn't know it should actually like... Um, rat mommy. Which hey. one do I look at? Do I look at? Is I'm there... so sorry. You're beautiful. Okay. You look beautiful. You're ravishing today. Yeah. Could I get you a glass of milk? Which eyes do I look at? <laughs> there are multiple <laughs> eyes. <laughs> Azu, just, just focus on the hat. Focus on the, the hat. hat. The okay. Just look at the feather. Okay. Okay. Help. Which I had to put googly eyes on the hat. Hi, once. rats. Didn't go well. Mother. Uh, H hello, matron of vermin, uh, mother of rats, uh, sitter upon the rot throne. Yali's like doing their best to like come up with flattering like epithets, like they're first used to in the of palace. Her name. First of I'm her guessing. name, breaker of grain stores, uh, rat mother. Uh, my name is Yali. Uh, these are my friends, Dechen and Azu. We seek a fourth friend, Coral. Uh, she's an earthbender, not from the Fire Nation. Uh, have you seen her? And Yali goes on to describe a physical appearance of Coral. 
Um, the rats start to kind of convulse a little bit. There's a bunch of squeaking. A couple of like odd items get like kicked out of this formation. Um, a button, a couple pieces of string. At this, at this point, Etchin just takes out the cake and hides behind it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the rats fall silent and Ragu ste steps up, picks up the button, picks up the string. I, I could translate. Okay. So rat mommy, she's saying a lot with these things. Um, <clears throat> that was, that was her speaking. Yeah. You heard the squeaks, didn't you? It's my job to translate. It's all of the rat kids know how to translate what rat mommy says. Uh-huh. Okay, speaker of the rats, tell us what she's saying. Oh, that's a that's a cool name. Everybody just calls me Ragu. I like speaker of rats. It's, it's... Anyway, so the button this signifies that there's supposed to be four of you. You're supposed to be four together. And when you're not together, you're just this lonely button that don't has any other button friends. And now this little piece of red thread right here tells me your friend is somewhere red. Or they was locked up somewhere red. Is your friend potentially wearing red? N no, no. They're a very uh, proud Earth Kingdom person. Somewhere red. Uh, could you be more specific? There's a lot of red places in the Fire Nation. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. Let me turn back to Rat Mommy. Hey, could you, yeah, just roll around in your pile for a bit and give me give me something else to work with. Um, and there's a moment where the rats kind of convulse again, convulse again, and a couple more objects fall out um this time <laughs> this time See, this is fucking horrifying <laughs> i love this so much i don't know how to <laughs> every time friendly show <laughs> every time you say the rats can fall <laughs> they can fall it's lose. just like <laughs> i, I want to like shit I want to hide behind the actual cake, except that these are the pictures in my mind, and I can't escape <laughs> them. <laughs> oh, goodness. Um, a couple more objects fall out. Um, this one is the tip of a spear, and there is the, um, ooh, we'll say in a little bit of rubber. And Ragu picks up the pieces. Ah, I understand. Okay, so... And they hold up the spear tip. Your friend's been taken captive. I mean, you, you told me that much, but this confirms it. Rat Mommy said that she heard down the pipe holes that there are some uh, Fire Nation soldiers that are kind of holding your friend against her will. I mean, most of the time they do, but there is a lot of them. I have never seen Rat Mommy spit out a spear tip quite like this. There's got to be at least 20 to 25 Fire Nation soldiers. And this... And they hold up the uh, piece of rubber. This is part of a tread. You ever see them Fire Nation tanks where they roll around and they just shoot out fire from the front? They got yes. rubber treads. Yeah, they're scary. They're terrifying. If he's uh, in a Fire Nation tank, there's only one path in and out of the city with those tanks. That's the palace. Mm -hmm. so this that, isn't good. No, oh, that's but we did our job. Was that not good? No, that was perfect. Thank you, oh, Ragu. Oh, yeah. Actually, thank you so much for translating. And Rat Mommy, thank you. Dechen made cake, or Dechen's mom made cake. Oh, the rats are going crazy. Look at that. They're squeaking like you never heard. They love cake. <sighs> if you could just kind of push the cake in front of the chair by the, by like the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I give this cake to Yali, and as I like, move closer you can just hear me screaming very quietly <laughs> just like a continuous scream just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yali's like letting out like a forced smile and says behind gritted teeth dutchin don't show fear rats can smell it and they like put the cake down at the base of the throne <laughs> i still can't believe you reached a bunch of rats that was that was <laughs> Asu, honestly stop. Uh, no, Asu, uh, shut it Asu. Asu, can you roll to push your luck? No! <laughs> this is a roll with uh, passion. In passion? I'm great in passion. Let's go. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh. 
Um, I mean, I make it a seven. Okay. Um, the squeaks of like the the pile uh, of the pile of rats um, starts to like undulate a little bit, and the next thing you know, one rat body um, kind of dislocates itself from the pile and like a projectile hits you right across like the face and then like a boomerang zooms right back into the pile of rats oh oh my god (laughs) the egg of the rat mommy you got your guts to go i'm so sorry wait did the did it is i just got sucker punched by a rat yeah it's it's what happens when rat mommy gets upset for the first time in this entire exchange detent says Thank you so much for your information. We really appreciate it. I hope you really like the cake. It's raspberry, strawberry, custard. Let's go, Azu. Bye, Yali. Come on, Yali. Yeah, okay, yeah, yes, yes. Thank yeah. you so much. Wait, no, I'm so sorry it. about Azu. No, 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 no. We just one arm under each. No, no, no. And both, yeah, one arm. Ketchin and Yali are like dragging Azu out. Dragging Azu out. Yeah. The whole time, Azu just screaming and kicking, like, I'm going to kill that rat. I stick. I get it. Come at me. One me, one me. I just stick a Momo in your mouth, like a dumpling in your mouth. It's just like, sh- gag you. <laughs> <laughs> just <laughs> drag you out of the room. And then uh, that scene will come to a close. And we're going to finish up with Coral inside of this tank. Now, you have been properly restrained, finally. Um, did we ever come to a conclusion? Was there ever such thing as... Bender preventing, bending, preventing. Yeah, handcuffs. I think yes. you should just decide. Yeah, right? I think you yeah, decide. you should decide. Okay. okay. Um, they exist, and they're called sandstone, sea stone, whatever they use in One Piece. Um, and they have now been placed on your hand, Coral. Um, as well as Bagel happens to have a matching pair. Um, Bagel singing a bit of a, a ditty, singing a song about um, a, a wizard and his staff. Excuse me, a wizard and his rod. Like, wizard's gotta clean a rod. Wizard's gotta clean a staff. You give it a rub and you give it a tug. What oh gosh, that's <laughs> probably not very get appropriate. Did you huh. lie? Are you a bender? What? <laughs> Is this what? our dad? If it's our dad, I'm gonna throw up. <laughs> Why is he so old? <laughs> he lost in 16 hours at this age. <laughs> Myth and legend, my friends. Myth and legend. <laughs> He's like that one, uh, like air, not airbender, but like air guru, um, right? And it's like a bagillion years old and has the stamina of like a, a wild beast <laughs> yes <laughs> um so we laugh to... so hard this is definitely our dad i don't know what to say i've been laughing at everything come on I, i'm just saying it's suspiciously hard laugh please don't let be our dad please don't, oh, don't make this our, our dad. dad has to be sluttier than this <laughs> Don't you worry, kids. Don't, don't that you worry. That song was about polishing his staff. I, oh, I don't oh believe God. it's our dad until, like, you see a man show up with lingerie on and, like, what that's our dad. What color are his eyes? <laughs> uh, this man's eyes are um, a deep brown. Okay, not our dad. Thank God. Thank fuck. Yeah, yeah we all yeah. have those green eyes. <laughs> no. You said you weren't a bender, but they put anti-bending cuffs on you. Oh yeah, I, I guess I forgot. I, I, I can be. I'm a bit of an earthbender sometimes. Why didn't uh, you help? With with what? The escape. <laughs> oh, right. If you would have fortified my wall, we could have like gotten out the back way or something. Yeah, yeah. So, um, here's the thing, little hu- human. Uh, I was paid. My name is Coral. 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 I I was paid a lot of money. Well, they bought my cabbages from me. If I could lie and distract the next inmate. And well, it was you. So I I got my cabbages paid for. But now you're a prisoner. Oh. (laughs) 
how are you going to get paid? Oh. You're in the tank with me, with your cuffs on. Oh, oh, would you look at that? Oh, they probably don't want me bending. Huh. Well, this is, this is a, this is a pickle or a pickled cabbage, some would say. Wow, you really, it was that easy to betray another person. Uh, All they had to do was buy your cabbages. Do you not know what it's like to be a cabbage vendor out there? I do not know what it means to be a, a cabbage vendor, no. Oh, it's, it's really tough and doing it for the Fire Nation, they are not respected. So I, I just kind of did what I could. My goldfish has to be able to get fed, and now well, I realize I was going to feed it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's something I'm coming to a conclusion about. Yeah. I, I guess I'm ready to escape. Well, it's a little late. <laughs> <laughs> you say that, <laughs> but hear me out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Could you please tell me your tragic backstory? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> if only you'd listened to his tragic backstory, maybe he would have helped. <laughs> <laughs> there was no time. <laughs> we have plenty of time now. Oh, um, yeah. I mean, but before I tell you my tragic backstory, <laughs> I, I should probably also tell you this one. Uh, one really important piece of information, but like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> can I have you do the last roll of the night is going to be a plead with an NPC. <laughs> oh, this is actually, um, it is a role with, um, harmony. Well, and also, um, Oh, do you have something for this? I have a thing. Uh, deep ball, bap, bap. When you live up to your ideals at a significant cost, someone who witnessed or hears about your sacrifice approaches you to affirm their allegiance to your group's purpose, write their name on the list of allies, and then once they're added to my list of allies, I can plead with them at any time. Oh, they always are cool. open to you if you um, comfort or support them, and you can call on them to live up to their principles as if you had rolled a, deep, a, a 10 plus. But I'll, I, I then I'll have to that. erase their names from the list after I do that. Oh, okay. Um, because like you absolutely lived up to action. You jumped right into action the first chance that you got. Um, at a significant cost. I mean, it was utterly useless. Um, well, it was. You didn't witnessed. have to say it uh, like that. Um, I'm afraid and I'm embarrassed, which are the two <laughs> worst things you can be. <laughs> so. <laughs> I don't need you to tell me. <laughs> oh gosh, there's there's a lot going on. Yeah, absolutely. You can add bagel to that list, and this can be taken as a ten plus. Okay. Good, because I'm rolling crappy. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So, who cares what you think for help, support, or action? Roll harmony. Uh, 10 plus, they act now and do their best until the situation changes. Okay, so you, you want me to help you escape? Okay. Yeah, I think I, I think I saw you suffer enough. I I feel bad for not for not really helping out a good uh did, did you say you were an elderly? Doesn't matter. What matters is this is my moment, and I regret selling you out for some cabbages. I should have known better, and I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> and what that means is, I'm gonna let you know a little something. I've got kind of like a, a special relationship with the corporal of the uh, of the soldier squad here. What the corporal buys a oh, they, they they just buy all my cabbages. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I I know I was singing the song about the the wizard. Right, yeah, we don't need to talk about that. No, I, yeah, I have to still be appropriate. I don't want to actually go to jail. Um, you so, already, but, never mind. We gotta break out of here. Come on, <laughs> you gotta believe. I just, I want to let you know, if you ever come face to face with the corporal, they're probably the person who's escorting us. They're like seven feet tall, built like a brick house. Their hobbies are eating brick sandwiches, or so the rumors <laughs> are. But 
If you ever need to use them or get them on your side, you just have to ask really, really nicely. That guy can't say no to anybody. How he got that position, I don't really know. Was that was that helpful in our, yeah, in our great escape plan? Super helpful. I I I hope it's the corporal that ends up escorting us. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what that corporal's name was. Oh, hey, Michelle, what's the last kind of tea that you drank? Jasmine. Uh, his name <laughs> his name's Corporal Jasmine, I think. Fitting. Pretty. Yeah. Pretty buff guy and then like the the tank kind of clanks around and the two of you are buffeted a little bit does it sound like we're on a train you know i've never been in a train so i, I can't confirm you be. <laughs> oh no <laughs> it sounds well no it sounds like it's really hollow and metal um i don't know what trains are like before they had like nice seating <laughs> that sounds right Okay, okay. That I, I was more thinking thing. of the like choo, 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 choo. <laughs> it's that a slower like clunk. 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 If that is real. Is that are you trying to make a train noise? Yep. Oh. But like I'm trying to make <laughs> I'm trying to make a train noise if it was a tank. Oh, because it's a tank? Because it is a tank. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> thus ends this episode of Avatar Legends. We're going to do some closing questions to see this if anybody great. has grown from this. <laughs> I love this. Very, very standard game that I have run. Um, we're going to start with you, Vanna. Uh, I say this and I don't have your stuff ready. Uh, playbook growth question. Did you improve the lives of a community? What? Did you improve the lives of a community of average citizens or help an ordinary person with their problems? <laughs> I mean, I think I really got through that guy about having fun. <laughs> uh... <laughs> okay, did I make it so Bagel saw that he shouldn't just sell out his fellow man for cabbages. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. You absolutely improve Bagel's life in that regard. Um, so on the little chart be uh, below your growth advancement, you can put a one somewhere. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, da -da. Yeah, Lee. Uh, what is yours again? Um... It's on the playbook. Did you learn oh, something you. meaningful or important about your lineage, its members, or its effects on the world and others? I don't know. Um, <laughs> does ragu <laughs> as a connection count? I mean, you I have mean, the you whole learned thing. About the yeah, how, that's um, true. And its how... effects on others. That's true. Yeah. That it is the mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually really lovely in a horrible way, but yeah, there was growth. Ooh. <laughs> I've unlocked my moment of balance. Ah! Ooh. I love that. We'll have to discover what that means on the next episode, because yes. I gotta research. Uh, Dachan, did you accomplish a feat worthy of your burden and tradition? I think... Oh, gosh. In a way, I think so, because there is... Um a large a large part of um like airbending culture i think is just to accept that something happened let it go let go of your let it go okay um but just kind of let go of these earthly attachments um because all things are transient and that there's a beauty in that there's a beauty in that ephemerality and so i think that she did in a way like adhere to that in the sense of taking that pain from like witnessing that destruction understanding the context of it understanding that her sibling is a part of that mm -hmm. so i i would have accepted you brought the rat mommy some cake but that was a oh much okay more... so that was fantastic so thank you no worries. <laughs> so okay. what what happens when i do that 
So right underneath, we have a little growth advancement chart, and you're going to put another little tick mark. Okay, cool. Yeah. Just got one more. And um, when you we, when you advance, you get to do a thing or? Yeah. So when we advance, we can either take a new move from your playbook. Um, you can take uh, a new from another playbook. You can unlock your moment of balance, which we will discover in our next session. You can raise one of your stats by a plus one to a minimum of plus two in any given stat, which is also very useful. Or you can shift your center one step. You may also take this growth. Oh, but yeah, you can shift your center one step. Okay. I I think I'm going to choose. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about it next time, but I love, uh, I have some ideas. Okay, perfect. And Drac, do you want to go ahead and read your last, uh, your growth question? Yeah. So my growth question is, did you make progress towards your goal against your adversary? Um, I don't think so. Um, I think this whole, like this session was mainly finding about finding Coral. I don't think he made any headway towards finding Slutty Dad. <laughs> okay. So I want to say no. Nope, that's fair. I can't really justify that when I was trying to think like, no, no. You had a very specific goal and you yeah. accomplished it. If your adversary was Rat Mommy, then, you know, probably, but that was not the case. On a fan you put down a new adversary. Wait, can I actually change? My... Nah, I wouldn't. <laughs> no, <you> wouldn't. <laughs> Maybe for a campaign, that'd be perfect. Okay, fantastic. <laughs> well, that was a unique session. So, thank you everybody for sitting with us. Did we do in... Connie's during that? Did we do? Yeah, Connie was the beginning. Yes. The oh, second okay. beginning. Ignore me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you for enjoying this experience of a combination of rats, um, all of my bad accents, a delirious old man, and a bunch of failures by the cast. I have been your host, Zelda. If you are so inclined, you can follow me on Twitter as at B underscore Zelda. I'm a podcaster, streamer, writer, and community manager for Adventures League. Um, as well as I DM a heck ton of things. I posted my tentative schedule uh, on my Twitter where I have only six streams in a week, but I'll be adding two more to that. So make sure you stay tuned for more information. Uh, let's mix it up. Michelle, why don't you go next? Hi, um, thank you so much for watching and for your toast and for your attention. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kiln Fiend Potter. Um, Unlike everyone else, I, I'm still fairly new to the streaming world, so I soon will be having my own little craft stream on Monday nights um, where I will be doing things like building Lego or like build, uh, doing a one-person TTRPG. Uh, just a nice little chill time for y'all to just mm. hang out and listen to me def a curse at some bricks. So yeah, you can follow me there and you can get my Twitch information there too. Perfect. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'll just toss it over, or I guess I can toss it over. Connie, where can we find you? What you doing? Hey, folks. Hi. Uh, I have been Yali, <clears throat> who was very horrified this session by <laughs> Rat Mommy. Um, when I'm not being <laughs> menaced by B as my GM, I am the GM that menacing my players and the creative producer on Trans Planar RPG, which is an all transgender people of color led D and D stream set in Andake, a completely homebrew, non colonial, anti orientalist world. Um, if you like grim, dark, gritty fantasy run by queer people of color, check us out Saturdays at 7 p.m. U.S. Central Time or 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. Follow us on Twitch and Twitter at trans planar rpg and toss me a follow on my personal accounts on tiktok and twitter at by connie jong and with that i'll pass along our introductions to vanna oh thank you so much connie uh you can find me streaming full-time at twitch.tv slash vanna that is v-a-n-a -A, and i'm on most social media at havana rama h-a-v-a-n-a-r-a-m-a -A -A. um and uh there's a lot of things cooking but no dates to share right now so that's all i got I guess Fabulous. I'm next, right. Yeah, and then our last castmate, um, Drac. Hi, I'm Draconix, or Drac for short. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Draconix, that's D R A K O N I Q U E S. Um, I think the next thing that's coming up that's, um, that's going to be fun is on Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern, I think. I'm going to be over on Hitpoint Press playing in the Humblewoods and One Shot. 
Um, we're oh. going to be playing through the um, Seed of Decay um, little adventure that just came out on Kickstarter. I was funded literally in two hours today, so I was pretty damn cool. Um, I'm going to be playing a tree, which I'm very excited about. Yeah. A, a little sycamore sapling tree. Um, oh. he's, he's a sycamore sapling and his name is Moore. Uh, I'm very excited <laughs> to play that. So you can find me there at 5 p.m. Eastern on Hit Point Press. Um, but yes, yeah, it for me. Awesome. Well, thank you everybody for tuning in. If you want to catch up on all of our shows, you can do so on YouTube or find us as podcast. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified for new content when it is posted to this channel. Join the Exploration Society on Ko-Fi. Don't forget to join our Discord where we will be talking about Rat Mommy all day long. So see you next time and join us Sunday over for our Over Arms actual play New Pantheon Academia with GM Stephen Pope. Until then, goodbye.